Hi you guys, I know that it's been a while since I've been on. It's been a lot going on in my world, but I wanted to come on and just share this encouraging word that God has been speaking to my heart. And I was asking, should I share with people? Because, you know, not everything that God tells you is for others. Sometimes it's just for you. But I felt like I got the permission to go ahead and share. So as you can see from the title, it says, don't give up. This past week was really, really trying for me. And all I kept hearing was don't give up, don't give up. It was, the messages were everywhere. Everywhere I turned around, it was don't give up. I was reading it, I was hearing it. It was just the same thing over and over. And then I went to church last Saturday and the title of the sermon was don't give up. And I was just like, okay, God, this is you speaking. And I know it is. And I have to, you know, make up my mind to dig my heels in and really see through whatever it is that I need to see through. The end of the year is usually a really rough time for a lot of people. The attacks are increased because a lot of us want to finish the year strong. And then of course we have an enemy that wants to make sure that you do not finish the year strong. He wants to make sure that you're not productive, that you're feeling worn down, beat up, discouraged. Maybe there are some things you were asking God for and it hasn't come to pass yet. But anyway, we all know that the tricks of the enemy are endless. <clears throat> What I really wanted to touch on though was the sermon itself that I heard in church. He used the story of Jairus or Jairus as I've heard some people call him. And this story is found in Mark chapter 5 verse um, Mark chapter 5 verse 21. And this guy was one of the rulers of the synagogue. And when he came to Jesus, he fell at his feet. So some will call that worship, right? So he needed something from God, but the first thing he did was worship. And one that's one thing that God has been highlighting to me that praise and worship is gonna be a really is a really big weapon. And then he tells him, you know, my daughter is lying at the point of death. Can you come heal her? And if I'm looking down, I'm I'm looking at my Bible. And the word of God says that this man besought Jesus greatly. So there was a great deal of asking, knocking, seeking, if you will. There was a great deal of travail. And that's exactly like during this season, you know, everyone is saying press in in prayer, press in deeper to God. But sometimes the very thing you're supposed to do is the very thing you feel like you don't have strength to do. But this guy pressed into him greatly. And he said, come lay hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And I feel like there's some things right now that we're watching kind of spiral. There's some things right now in our lives that we feel like are coming to an end or have we've had a dead end on. And we're telling God, if you would just breathe on it, if you would just lay hands on it, this thing can live. And so Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. So Jesus went right away. I don't even think Jesus said any word. He just went. So for me, that means that God is hearing our prayers very much so. Like it, sometimes it feels like he's, he's not. And that's how I've been feeling. Like, where are you? And the sermon at church touched on that. He said, Jesus is near, but I'm going to get to that. So on the way to this man's house, that's when we get the, the famous story of the woman with the 12-year issue of blood. She also has her own issue and she stops and she touches, well, she fights her way through the crowd touches the hem of Jesus' garment and she is healed of her infirmity. And Jesus, feeling virtue leave him, turns and was like, who touched me? And his disciples think he's crazy because they're like, you are literally thronged by people. What do you mean who touched me? And so this woman comes to him and admits that it was her. He tells her, your fate has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now this is the part that the pastor at church really focused on. He said, um, Sometimes, not even sometimes, when we pray, God hears us and he is working on the, the thing we ask him to work on. But sometimes while he's in the process of getting to us, while he's in the process of getting to our house, um, while he's in, on his way, sometimes someone else's request interrupts ours. And the pastor was just pointed out that this man did not get upset. He had full faith that Jesus was going to make it in time to his house to keep his daughter alive. He was not irritated. And this spoke to me because how often, how easy it is it 
to have a bad attitude during the wait. I was praying in the morning and this story and the sermon came up for me and I felt like I was prophesying to myself. And I was saying things like, Aluchi, Jesus is still on his way to your house. Maybe he had to stop and help someone else. Maybe there was someone else that had enough faith to, to touch his garment. Are you really going to begrudge Jesus the opportunity to serve someone else? Are you really going to be upset because God is answering someone else's prayer faster? Do you really think that God has forgotten about you? And this is the part of the sermon that I met. He said, God is near. He said, if you notice, Jesus never left Jairus' side. When he was still speaking to the woman, he didn't go off somewhere. He didn't wander off to go have a side conversation with her. He was still there. So even as Jesus is still making his way, even as he hasn't yet resolved the issue, he is still very much near you and he is still on his way to your house. While he's having this conversation with this woman, one of the men, someone from the, the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus' house, came and said, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master. And then they said, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Oh my God. The, the sermon, right, was saying, he was saying, it is right when you ask God for something and he is on his way that the enemy comes with discouragement. I feel like I'm going to cry. And if you notice, Jesus doesn't even address the guy that popped in to say the negative stuff. Jesus spoke directly to the man. And he said, do not, be not afraid, only believe. And I felt like that was what he was telling me like all week, like don't give up. He, he didn't address the enemy. He didn't address Satan. He didn't address the circumstances, the, the tiredness, the overwhelm, all the stuff that I've been dealing with. He just told me, don't be afraid. Don't give up. And he's telling, he told that to Jairus and he's telling that to us. I'm still going to do what I said I'm going to do. And if you notice, God doesn't give a hoot if, you're, if your situation goes from bad to worse. Because he already knows he has the ability within himself to bring a favorable outcome. It's irrelevant to him what it looks like when he gets to your house. All that matters to God is that you inviting him into your situation. And all that matters is that you believe that he's still on his way to your house. And that no matter what you hear, oh, and this, I have to bring this up. If you read the book of Nehemiah, which I strongly recommend if you want to learn spiritual warfare and how to defeat the enemy and how he operates. One of the ways in which the builders of the wall at Jerusalem became discouraged was because they heard their neighbors say, Sambalat and Tobiah, um, Arab, whatever, three of them, <laughs> Okay. They started, they started speaking to the neighbors of those building the wall. And then the neighbors of those building the wall came and reported it to the people building the wall. It says 10 times. And they became so discouraged. And it's so funny because literally a few verses prior, it said, and God gave the people a mind to work. For the people had a mind to work. The enemy had come at them, Nehemiah had prayed, and suddenly the people had a mind to work. That means they had strength, they had vigor. They were going after with gusto until they heard a bad report. And you know what came to me when I was studying this? If faith comes by hearing, doubt also comes by hearing. And so here comes this man from Jairus' house, and he has a bad report. And Jesus is like, Anyway, have faith, only believe, and he's saying the same thing to us. I'm still on my way to your house. I can still fix whatever thing you think is falling apart, whatever situation has gone from bad to worse, whatever you think has died, and if I had just gotten there, and what else, the other thing that occurred to me is, sometimes the longer we wait, the greater the miracle. You know, Jesus had touched lots of sick people before. Let me not say that. I don't know how many miracles he had done prior to this one. But how common that would have been. You know, Jesus came and touched your sick daughter who was at the point of that and she became well. But because Jairus waited patiently and because Jairus had faith, his miracle went from simply healing a daughter lying at the point of death to having a daughter being raised from the dead. So don't think that just because something's dying out, God can't resurrect it or that a greater miracle is not in the works. I almost feel like the longer you're willing to wait, the bigger the miracle it will be. And so 
all of that just ministered to me and i know i was rambling this is completely unplanned but i just want to tell you whoever you are it's almost the end of the year and this is really like struggle bus season usually for a lot of people and it's really hard to finish strong and the enemy's doing everything he can to bring discouragement and distractions together and i just want to encourage you don't give up jesus is still on his way to your house all right have a good one guys bye